Hi, this is Hillary with the Nurse Preceptor channel. Welcome back. We are in the middle of my 30 preps in 30 days for the month of September, which is National Preparedness Month. This is September 5th, so this is our fifth day of going over some essentials. I'm going over essential knowledge, essential skills, and essential purchases for your health independence. I'm trying to help those of you who have a sincere desire to try to become as independent health-wise as you can from the current medical system. I'm a registered nurse, and one of the most important things that we get on patients who come into the clinic, into the hospital, into the ED, is a set of vital signs because it provides you with a really quick snapshot of their health status right that moment, and it allows you to get that baseline assessment from which then you can recheck and decide if there are certain trends going on, such as a heart rate that is changing or an oxygen saturation that's changing in some way. So the essential vital signs are temperature, pulse, respiration rate, which you can just count without having anything special, blood pressure, and pulse oximetry. So a few things that you really need to have in your arsenal. These things are mostly inexpensive. They can be purchased widely right now. I recommend getting a few of these now before supply lines run short again like they did about a year and a half ago when all of the lockdowns started happening everywhere. So first of all, for temperature, you want a reliable thermometer. I happen to really like this VIX oral thermometer. It can also be used rectally if you have a small child. Um, however, um, what you also want to have to go over it is probe covers, and you can buy these separately as well. I just got the generic CVS brand. Um, so the thing about the thermometer, obviously if you're using it as a rectal thermometer, Dedicate it strictly for that and don't reuse it as an oral thermometer. I hope I don't have to state why. It's pretty gross. But I like this thermometer because it's really quick. I think it gives results within five seconds. It, I have checked it with other thermometers and it seems to be very consistent in the results that it gives. You put it right underneath the tongue or if you have someone who really can't cooperate too well, you can stick it right under their arm and just hold their arm close to them. For pulse, well, it helps if you know how to check a pulse rate. If you can find the radial artery, which if you have them stick their thumb up, okay, and go to where their thumb meets their wrist and go down just a little bit, you will start feeling a pulsation. You can, with a watch, count for 30 seconds, multiply it by two, and you've got the pulse rate for a minute. You could count it for a whole minute if you want to, but I tend to lose track if I do that. So um, that will give you a very quick snapshot of their heart rate. I'm going to jump ahead to the pulse oximetry. I bought this Acumed pulse oximeter and I did a video on how to use this and I did a product review on my channel. Check it out. It's really, really easy. I love this little thing. It's so little. I mean, so it comes, it comes with a strap so you can actually put it around you like a lanyard if you wanted to consistently and continuously check someone's pulse oximetry. It also has a little loop so you could put it on your belt if you wanted to have it close by. This cost me about $20 on Amazon about a year and a half ago. I think the prices have gone up just to like $25 or $30, but it's still not bad. It runs on batteries, so you turn it on with the button, slide your finger into it, and it gives you not only a reading of your pulse oximetry, which means the percentage of oxygen that you have in your blood, 99% is really good. I've got 91. Oh, I can do better than that. My fingers are cold, that's probably part of it. I just came into the air conditioning from being outside. And it also gives you a nice readout of your pulse rate. And so yeah, 97, I knew I wasn't at 91%, no way. But it gives you a nice readout, minute to minute, and if you wanted to trend someone, you could just leave it on their finger for a while, and like if they were eating, drinking, sleeping, and you wanted to track their pulse oximetry, you could. So it gives you some options. Along with that, make sure you have extra batteries. So the other thing I wanted to show you, let's see, is a blood pressure cuff. And I would say out of all of the things um, that give you a quick snapshot of someone's um, well-being, if you're legitimately concerned about blood pressure, then there are probably other vital signs that are going to be abnormal before your blood pressure is. It's actually kind of a late indicator. 
if someone is having some issues like severe inflammation or sepsis or shock or fluid loss or anything like that. But these are these are pretty easy. I, I this 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 one was rather expensive. I think it was a couple hundred dollars. Got it a long time ago, but you've all seen these at the doctor's office. It velcros onto the arm. Can't not you cannot take this on your own. But they have some wrist ones that are fairly, um, I can't even get this on. Yeah, so don't try to do this by yourself, but you could use this on another person. They do have some wrist blood pressure cuffs that you can buy at the pharmacies. I don't know how reliable they are. I've never tried one. I can't speak to it. But I know that a lot of doctors who have patients monitor their blood pressures do have them use those at home. And if you get one of these manual ones, the other thing you're going to need is a stethoscope because you have to you have to be able to put the stethoscope on on the artery to be able to hear the blood pressure changes. So those are just a few things that I wanted to point out that you may want to keep in your arsenal for measuring essential vital signs. And what I also would highly recommend, it doesn't do you any good to have these vital signs if you don't know what to do with them or how to interpret them. So you can look up online very easily a list of vital signs according to age, according to gender, according according to weight, it may, may vary just a little bit. But if you can get just your, your general vital sign parameters, then you will know if something is extremely abnormal. For example, if your heart rate is normal is somewhere between 60 and 100. So you know if you're seeing a heart rate of 160, then that's probably abnormal. If you're seeing a heart rate of 55, that might be somebody's normal. So that's why it's so important to get those baseline assessments so that you know what, what to do going forward and you know whether we're making progress or whether there are some things going on that are concerning. Okay, I hope that helps. Tune in every day this month. I'm going to be going over some more essential information for those of you who want to kind of start breaking away a little bit from this very dysfunctional medical system right now. And even for those of you who, who appreciate the medical system, as I do, but who don't particularly want to have to go in to see someone for every little thing, I would like for you to become more self-sufficient. So I'm gonna teach you how to do that, okay? Um, this is the Nurse Preceptor. Um, before I go, I want to remind you, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications and share this with any friends who you think may benefit from this. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it.